Dr. Goal, you're in a really unique training program right now. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Sure, so I am actually just completing my first year as a fellow in clinical informatics here at Stanford. It's a brand new fellowship. I'm one of two inaugural fellows and we just began last July. Congratulations. Thank you. So what does the training program entail and why did you choose to do this? Clinical informatics is a, a, a really largely emerging field now um, in medicine. And uh, the main reason that I chose to do it is um, I really think that electronics and the um, use of information systems is a huge part of medicine in its future and they need more people who are both clinicians and those who understand information systems um, to be in this type of role and the training program really is providing me with a lot of that um, knowledge base. Is it an on-the-ground uh, type of training or are you working learning how to analyze data sets? What do you actually do? So there are two kind of uh, components to the fellowship. Um, one, and I think probably the most important, is is very much on the ground, in the field, in the hospital setting type of work. So um, working in various clinical settings, um, specifically with their information system departments. So the Stanford School of Medicine, the Stanford Adult Hospital, the Pediatric Hospital, um, and then also various um, companies um, and hospital groups uh, in the Bay Area or even national if we so choose. And the second portion is actual didact didactic work, um, so coursework to really learn about information systems, to learn about what analytics are, what data warehouses are, and how you can use that um, to, to drive your work. You've already had a chance to sort of see how big data can affect your work as a pediatrician. I read a little bit about your project with alarm fatigue. Can yeah. you explain that? Sure. So. Um, I think that what this project really uh, has allowed us to do is to take big data and really apply it in the clinical setting at the forefront of patient care. Um, so the real purpose for me is how do you change the status quo of patient care and use big data to do it. Um, so right now patients, uh, vital signs, uh, the parameters that we use to monitor patients in the hospital are, are are kind of just numbers that we were arbitrary, somewhat arbitrarily chosen a long time ago. And what I'm using is using big data to drive um, the creation of vital sign parameters that mm -hmm. are, are really more clinically applicable. So you're speaking about a kid who's in the hospital and is hooked mm -hmm. up to a monitor, and every yeah. time their blood pressure drops, the alarm dings, which can wake up the patient Absolutely. and alert. So you're changing what will tell the alarm to ding. And why is that so important? So it's really important because uh, Alarm fatigue is a real problem in the clinical setting. A couple of years ago, the Joint Commission, which kind of oversees all accreditation for hospitals, recognized alarm fatigue as a, a huge cause of patient mortality and even um, of morbidity and even mortality. Um, and can you explain what you mean by alarm fatigue? So it's not the patient who's getting fatigued, really. It's the yeah, physician. It's, it's the physician or any clinician in the healthcare mm -hmm. setting. And I would actually include the patient in that problem as well. Okay. Um, so there are tens of thousands of alarms that go off in a hospital on any given day um, and like you mentioned it's because their vital signs may uh, drop below a certain threshold or rise above a certain mm -hmm. threshold and that causes an alarm to go off. The problem is that out of these tens of th thousands of alarms that go off, um, a lot of research has shown that up to 99% of those alarms are not actually clinically significant wow. or don't require any type of intervention. So okay. it's kind of like the, you know, the boy who cried wolf phenomenon. Exactly, sure. Yeah. So you start to ignore them. If, exactly. if, if a patient's alarm is going off, you say it's probably not important, uh -huh. but you might miss something really important. And that's, and that's really what's been recognized, is that there have been patient deaths or um, really uh, terrible consequences in, for patients that have been attributed to alarm fatigue. Do you think that you can use big data to create, for example, more personalized profiles? So a five-year-old's alarm settings would be different than a 10-year-old's, or what is the ultimate goal here? Absolutely that. So what we're doing right now is using big data to, to look at how do a five-year-old's vital signs differ from a 10-year-old's vital signs, and using that data, how can we allocate certain vital sign parameters that make sense for those patient populations. But then to take that further to that question of can you personalize it even more, I think that's 
you know, the ideal future is not just how, to, how does a five-year-old differ from a 10-year-old, but how does this specific five-year-old sure. differ from a different five-year-old? Some people have a higher blood pressure than others, and mm -hmm. it would be, you know, it's funny. It sounds so logical. I, how, why has it not been implemented yet, do you think? I think it, it sounds so logical, and yet there are a lot of... Um, there are a lot of things that go into really driving change that causes us to rethink what we consider accepted standards mm. um, and to do so in a way that's still safe for patient care. So we want to decrease the number of alarms that are going off. We don't want to miss the ones that are significant and, and that that truly can be a challenge and studying that and understanding that is a lot of the work that I'm doing right now. Well, since you're a pediatrician, mm -hmm. is it a little bit more difficult to study kids because the variation among children is huge, a mm -hmm. newborn versus uh, you know, a, an 11 year old, that's huge. Mm -hmm. So how do you aggregate data over these very, very different ages? That's a great question, and, and interestingly, I think that's the reason that most of the data that exists on the m many of these issues exists only in the adult literature mm -hmm. and, and is therefore kind of extrapolated to the pediatric population. Um, data aggregation in pediatrics just um, requires a lot of, a lot of thoughtful um, analysis, and uh, a lot of people really come to the table to, to think through how to, how to do it. Well, it sounds like a pediatrician and a clinical informatics fellow might be the perfect combination then. <laughs> hoping, hoping that that's the case. Thanks so much for speaking with me. Thank you. Take care. Yeah.